I guess the saying that there is nothing new under the sun couldn't be more true. In other words, everything we have and are attempting was likely done by the progenitors of modern humans, even skyscrapers. What if I told you that some monolithic buildings are so old that it is impossible to fathom how they even came to be? Even today, the first inhabitants of some of these sites remain a matter of contention, and archaeologists are still perplexed by the reasons why they were erected. It's even more intriguing since some of these ancient structures are so high up in the sky that it's hard to believe anybody ever called them home. However, recent research indicates they may have been used for religious rites. But what if it wasn't? Because how could these structures have been constructed with technologies from the Stone Age? Why would a sanctuary of religious devotion be constructed at such a height, where it would be inaccessible to people and where it might hold the secrets of the sky? And what precisely is the sky's secret? Our interest has always been sparked on this channel by the weird, amazing, impossible, and mysterious. We love researching long-forgotten societies, conspiracies, and even legends that just might be true. Join us as we embark on this adventure and share our incredible discoveries with you. These topics seem to capture our imaginations for some untold reason, and we are sure they will also excite you. You can learn more about these ancient sky secrets by following our channel and liking this video, so be sure to stick around until the end. The Skellig Michael, an Irish landmark off the coast of County Kerry, comes in at number one. The early Christian monastery on this rocky island is renowned for being astonishingly well-preserved. Christianity first arrived in Ireland in the 6th century, when Christian monks lived on the island of Skellig Michael from roughly 588 A.D., until 1100 AD. Though archaeologists have since hypothesized that Skellig Michael, which is made of compressed clay and ancient red sandstone, originated roughly 360 to 374 million years ago, the actual date of the mountain's formation is unknown. The mountain, renowned for its intrinsic value and ragged elegance, has been the focus of many Irish folk tales over the years, and the first known tale was an Irish legend that claimed the site originally served as the cremation site of Prince Ir Milesius, who drowned during the voyage of the Milesians. The Skellig Michael was largely unoccupied for most of its history, until the Augustan Monastery was founded in the 6th to 8th centuries. As with several other islands off the shores of Kerry, this monolithic edifice was selected to help the occupants become closer to God. In addition to the mountain being constructed in the Clochon style and having beehive cottages inside of it, the Skellig monks also constructed three sets of stairs that go up to the monastery from distinct landing points. The location was consecrated to St. Michael in 1044. Around 12 monks lived permanently on Skellig Michael, according to archaeological evidence, but all of them are said to have departed the mountain sometime in the 13th century to travel to Skellig on the mainland which is when Skellig Michael started to attract pilgrims. One of Georgia's remotest ruins, which is shrouded in considerable mystery, is at position two. A natural limestone monolith known as the Katsky Pillar towers to a dizzying 130 feet in height. This church is regarded as being among the most remote on the entire globe. If you were trying to figure out why only a few ancient people chose to live on this monolithic rock, you might wish to infer that it was so they could be closer to God. The Kotsky Pillar served as the local monk's equivalent of a staircase to heaven, much like the previously mentioned mysterious site. Although it wasn't until the 13th century that this pillar was first mentioned in writing, it is thought to have served as a place of worship as early as the 4th century. According to theories, erosion and other natural factors caused the stone pillar to form millions of years ago. Sedimentary rock constitutes the bulk of the singular rock. Physical and chemical weathering eventually caused the rocks to break into tiny pieces. And as a result of this process, Georgia's Kotsky Pillar, a stunning landmark located in the Emeriti region, was created. Since climbing is challenging, the Kotsky Pillar, which has long been a pilgrimage site, has lost some of its appeal. Indeed, it is thought that only those with a pure heart can ascend which is why, until recently, it was a spot created just for monks who desired to be nearer to God. The highest church in the world is said to be perched atop the pillar, although its architects, or possibly its antecedents, have never been identified. Or, 
Perhaps the church's reputation as a symbol of the true cross stems from its mystique. But for whom and why was this church built? Not much was known of the church, at least not until a mountaineer and his team took it upon themselves to climb the 130-foot natural heap of stone structure in 1944. Alexander Japaritze and his team reported their findings, including the remains of two churches dating back to the 5th and 6th centuries and during the practice of asceticism. Following this religious tradition, priests and monks abstained from pleasures to pursue their spiritual aspirations. Recent investigations have dated the church to the 9th and 10th centuries, even though archaeologists are still unable to pinpoint the exact year of construction. This means the church's earliest foundations likely date back more than 1,000 years. A megalithic architectural rock covered with stunning wall paintings from the 5th century can be seen in the Hazen Warada of Ethiopia's Tigray region. Specifically, we are referring to the 8 460-foot-high Abuna Yamata Gu. Aside from its height, this ancient site is unique because it can only be reached by climbing a treacherous ascent on foot. On top of rocks chiseled into the cliff's side, this Ethiopian Orthodox Church is situated above a startling 250-meter drop. The outside graveyard, filled with the skeletal remains of deceased priests, even though it is thought no priest perished while attempting to scale the cliff, adds to the sense of beauty or dread, depending on how one looks at it. According to legend, Abuna Yamata Gu was one of the nine saints who traveled to northern Ethiopia at the beginning of the 6th century and founded the monasteries that still exist today. In honor of his life and contributions to the conversion of Ethiopia to Christianity, the region of Tigray was named after him. The interior of Abuna Yamata Gu features breathtaking artwork on the cave's walls, two exquisite mosaics covering the ceiling, an Orthodox Bible made from vivid sheets of goatskin, religious symbols, and the portraits of Christ's nine apostles. It is still unclear why he chose such a difficult peak that required laborious and careful ascent. Some speculate that it was so he could flee from foes, while others think it demonstrated his faith and true divinity. Whatever the reason, the Church has given Ethiopians the freedom to express their profound religious convictions in the most audacious ways. Visitors must first cross a natural stone footbridge to get to the Church. Then, they must go across a last small wooden footbridge before climbing up a vertical wall using handholds and footholds. Since this is sacred ground, all of this must be done barefoot. Given how difficult to get to and dangerous this Church in the Sky is, one might assume that there wouldn't be many people there. However, despite the discouraging 45-minute climb, the church is constantly crowded with worshipers who are eager to demonstrate their faith and get closer to God. Another enigmatic old cave is the Mustang Sky Caves, which are tucked away in the Himalayas on a high cliff overlooking the Kaligandaki River Valley. Little is known about these caverns besides the various artifacts, murals, statues, and manuscripts that researchers have found and give them a glimpse into the lives of the people who lived there because of how challenging it is to reach them. The riddles surrounding the caverns, such as how they were built, remain unanswered despite archaeologists' investigations. Why were the caverns built? When did this cave start to exist? Archaeologists have found remains from the area that are thought to be older than 2,000 years while they were researching the cave. And why were the caverns created exactly? The bodies discovered at the site, inhabited between the 3rd and 8th centuries, provide evidence that Buddhist monks may have used the cave for sky burials and used it as a meditation chamber between the 12th and 15th centuries. Although the earliest builders of the caves have not yet been discovered, Archaeologists have hypothesized that they were the East Asian inhabitants of the Tibetan Plateau based on current DNA tests. There are a variety of remote historical sites that can be discovered all over the world, including not just structures that can be utilized for worship, but also an entire city. A historic city that functioned as the center of an ancient civilization is located on top of the famous Sri Lankan landmark, Sigiriya. Locals refer to the location as the Eighth Wonder of the World. The historic city, often called the Lion Fortress by its inhabitants, is said to have been built in the 5th century under the supervision of the rebellious king Kashiapa. 
It has a variety of strongholds, large courtyards, lanes, canals, and fountains. Following his father's demise, King Kashyapa allegedly took control of Sri Lanka and attempted to take his brother's crown, according to modern archaeologists. And because he was afraid of rejection, according to legend, he moved to the vicinity of Siguria and built a fortress atop the massive rock in the hopes that it would be impregnable to his brother when he came back to claim his crown. However, he was defeated by his brother's troops. The cave was dedicated to Buddhist monks who occupied the cave and used it for religious purposes until the 14th century when it was abandoned and later rediscovered in the 15th century by John Forbes, who came across the site while riding his horse. The cave has a sophisticated hydraulic system that delivers water to plants, as well as numerous water retention structures. The fact that clay was used for all construction within this megalithic rock city is astounding. Given its rich history, it should come as no surprise that the area has earned recognition as a top archaeological site and has even been added to the UNESCO World Heritage List due to its extremely difficult construction, which was likely difficult for anyone living in this age to create. You might find it astonishing that the site is causing a substantial alteration to what we know as history. This begs the question, how was this city built? Could this be evidence of sophisticated technology? There is no doubt, however, that these prehistoric builders knew how to alter the periodicity of rocks, making them malleable to deal with. Or perhaps it came from a culture that existed much earlier than what archaeologists currently believe. I mean, that might be the sole explanation for the puzzling engineering feat found on this site. Do you believe that these ruins on the rocks were initially constructed for religious purposes? Why were they erected on such a high rock if they were created to help monks become more spiritual? Were the sites created solely for a restricted group of people? How was the monolithic rock in Sigeria transformed into a city? What resources did these ancient people draw upon to carry off these building feats? The original builders of these strange rocks may be discovered with further study, given how little is known about them. Do you think the objectives of these places were ultimately achieved? Post your comments below. I'd like to hear your thoughts.